Today, we'll be checking out the long-awaited Jean Alter of PGR, S. Vera Flair, or Garnet, or Ground Pound, I don't know. But she's the newest character being added in the upcoming Last Spark update. And if you don't want to miss future PGR guys and videos, don't forget to subscribe, and I also stream on my Twitch at twitch.tv slash spiders and if I make any corrections or forget to mention something, it'll be in a pinned comment down below. Alright, let's leap into it. Vera Flair is an S-rank tank construct that deals primarily lightning damage and features lightning resist shred, massive AoE burst damage, and a sweet, seductive, sadistic smile. And no, I don't need help. Because we all need help. And in this video, I'll cover her skills, passives, ascensions, playstyle, weapons, builds, team setups, and my pull and build recommendations. And as usual, I'll leave timestamps if you want to jump to a specific topic. Taking a look into her kit, her red orb spins her spear in an AoE, granting a small shield based on her HP and dealing physical damage. And if it's a 3 orb or matrix ping, it will deal lightning damage instead. And this is also her swap and attack. Her blue orb performs a forward lunge with her spear, dealing physical damage. And again, if it's a 3 orb or matrix ping, it will deal lightning damage instead. Vera's yellow orb does a <coughs> pole spin maneuver, I see you Kuro, pulling in the simps, I mean enemies, and dealing physical damage. And her 3 orb matrix pings will once again deal lightning damage instead. Her QTE drops a field, dealing initial lightning damage in an AoE, and then damage over time for about 8 seconds. Her basic attack string performs a series of pierces and spin attacks at melee range, ending in a small AoE slam, dealing physical damage. And dodging will also shorten her melee attack string. And basic attacking after any 3 orb or matrix ping will proc a pursuit attack, dealing lightning damage to the target, and this will tie into her core passive. And how her core passive works is after using the pursuit attack, Vera gains a charge, indicated at the bottom of the screen, and she can stack up to 3 of them. Holding down the basic attack with any amount of charges will perform a Thunderfall Slam, dealing AoE lightning damage, staggering enemies, and reducing enemy lightning resistance for a brief period. And each charge doubles the damage of the Thunderfall Slam attack. And as for the ultimate, Vera's face goes full psycho and she launches her spear forward, dealing massive lightning damage in an AoE cone in front of her. Her leader passive increases the team's lightning damage and tanks can increase attack. As for her ascensions at double S, her ultimate costs less, and Vera can now hold basic attack to perform Thunderfall right after ulting, cancelling the callback animation. She also now drops a QTE field when she swaps out. And at triple S, the Thunderfall lightning resist shred is increased, and her ultimate does more damage, and she takes less damage and stagger when shielded from red orb. And at triple S plus, her core passive Thunderfall gives a shield and its damage is increased. And I highly recommend to double S her because the ultimate animation law at base S is not cancelable by swapping or abilities, and the double S remedies this by allowing you to Thunderfall after ulting, removing the downtime. So if you got the Pancake Skulls, she's the one you want to double S. And Whales can aim for triple S for the increased lightning shred. And as for builds, for 5 star memories, you can run 4 piece Ike and 2 piece Gloria. And Vera has 2 primary 6 star memory builds, depending on her teams. The meta and recommended build, if paired with another damage dealer like Veritas, is her custom 4-piece Tifa set and 2-piece Einstein, and this provides great damage on top of shredding, lightning, resistance. And if you don't have Veritas and Vera is your only lightning DPS, then you can run 4-piece Tifa and 2-piece Heisen instead, and have another lightning unit run Einstein. And as for resonance, she's actually built like an attacker, prioritizing core passive on the bottom row over her tank class skill, but attack on top row is still optimal. And as for Hypertune, the bottom row is enough. And going through her weapons, for her 4 star weapon, just no, don't, don't do it, don't do it. As for her 5 star weapon, it's the minimum for free to play, since she does a good chunk of damage in lightning teams, and if you can't afford the signature 6 star weapon, the 5 star weapon is okay. That being said, if you can afford it, I recommend grabbing her 6 star signature weapon, since it allows Vera to single handedly burst down bosses and waves of enemies. It also smooths out rotations by giving a free core passive charge after ulting or triggering her QTE, and if timed right, her swap and attack becomes her thunderfall attack instead if her QTE is on the field. And finally, for her 6 star weapon resonance priority, Thunder Shake should be the first priority for the lightning resist shred, followed by deadline timing to help maintain the orb uptime, and matrix lightning or resonant echo is the last and lowest priority. As for team setup, we finally have a complete lightning team, Rip Chrome Arclight, you can join the others in the A rank retirement home. The usual setup for most game modes is Bianca Veritas in blue with her 4 piece Heisen 2 piece Frederick, Lift Lux on red to proc the 4 piece Da Vinci 2 piece Guinevere when Veritas triggers her core passive, and Vera Flare on yellow with her 4 piece Tifa and 2 piece Einstein to keep the lightning shred uptime. 
and depending on the situation, you can run Bianca or Vera as the leader, and you'll want Liv as the starter so the other two can abuse the swap and attacks. And again, this is the most common general setup, but it's not set in stone, so if you need to swap the positions for different strategies, you can. And if you don't own Veritas and Vera is your only Lightning DPS, you can slot in A Lucia Dawn or A Chrome Arclight instead, holding 2 piece Gloria, 2 piece Einstein, and 2 piece Lantern for the debuff set or their DPS Heisen sets. And if you have A Chrome Arclight at Triple S Plus, his Resist Shred from his ultimate can stack on top of S Vera's Resist Shred. His QTE doesn't stack though, but if you don't, then Lucia Dawn has more consistent and high damage at the downside of her ultimate ending when swapping out. And as for place down rotations, S Vera basically fulfills S Bianca Veritas' orb downtime, so instead of being left at the mercy of orb RNG gods for red and blue orbs, you can swap into S Vera instead to do damage. And if your live Lux is triple S plus, try to launch a yellow orb first to shred the lightning resist. Basically, it's just rotating between S Bianca's core passive shots and S Vera's thunderfalls, and maybe with A Liv coming onto the field for a quick yellow orb swapping attack. When Vera is off field and you own her signature weapon, try to proc her QTE as often as possible, so that when she swaps in, she'll have more charges. Better yet, if you can swap her in while her QTE is still in the field, you can swap an attack with a fully charged Thunderfall. And her Thunderfall can be a decent gap closer, and is a pretty forgiving AoE. For Vera's core passive, make sure that you get the basic attack in after the 3 orb of Matrix Pink for the charge. It seems obvious, but it can be easy to accidentally cancel the charge by using another orb. So weave in basic attacks with orbs to effectively build charges on Vera. And the amount of charges you want before using Thunderfall mostly depends on how much enemy HP you need to nuke. Max charges is always preferred, but if you're spending too much time waiting for a 3 orb matrix ping to build a charge and the enemy is already pretty low, you can just use Thunderfall with the amount of charges you have. And Vera's ultimate will automatically grant you another stack if you have her signature weapon, and with double S's reduced ult cost and ult cancel, you can use matrix orb, basic attack, and then ultimate, and get a decent 2 stack Thunderfall really quickly with barely any orbs. But remember that without 3 orb or matrix pings, Vera is doing physical damage and not lightning damage, so manage your orbs responsibly and be mindful of any matrix opportunities. Also try to time the Da Vinci QTEs with the Thunderfall Slam for maximum burst damage. As Vera basically nukes everything when highly invested, so double S, 6 star signature weapon, hyper tune, and proper resonances, and sometimes Bianca doesn't even need to swap in. And finally, for my pull and build recommendations, if you weren't already an S Vera simp, then yes, she's worth pulling. I think I've mentioned this in stream, but S Vera for Lightning Team is similar to Plume for Ice Team, by providing a massive AoE burst damage for their respective teams. Vera herself provides the best Lightning Resist Shred, but also deals massive burst damage that Veritas simply does not have access to. And personally, I find her ground pounds very satisfying. And if you care about the meta, definitely pull her and build her. And if you're still somehow not convinced, this is the greeting animation you get when you log in. So take this how you- And if there's any updates or corrections, I'll leave a pinned comment down below. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments or ask our community discord at discord.io slash And I'll try to spawn if I'm not busy. Subscribe to see no minutes feature guys and videos, and if you found this video informative, give it a like. And dislike if you didn't. I stream weekly or bi-weekly on my Twitch at twitch.tv slash fighter2b. So drop a follow if you want your questions answered live or you just want to see me mold. And my voice kind of sounds a little scuffed, and that's probably because I'm sick with COVID. But I wanted to get this video out before her release, and thank god Vera isn't super complicated. But anyways, thanks for watching, good luck on your polls, I'ma go nap, peace late.